I want to introduce you to Australia's first net zero community. These houses look like houses you'd see anywhere else. But just getting the, the fundamentals right. <laughs> these, lateral, these lateral buds will develop and we'll get some more broccoli. So if you design your house cleverly, mm -hmm. you get lower interest rates. Correct. Why isn't everyone talking about this? It's something that's talked about as a bit futuristic, but here, just an hour and 45 minutes southeast of Melbourne, it's happening. Residents are living this carbon zero lifestyle. In fact, in this community, they're making more energy than they're using. I don't know if everyone realises, and that's what we're trying to show at the Cape, that this is mainstream materials. Over 30% of residents have an electric vehicle as well. So everything here is all electrified. There's no gas. We're making more than three or four times as much power in the estate as we use, and that's before we store it with the batteries in a lot of the different garages. There's such a surplus of electricity generated that we're still powering some of the suburb of Cape Patterson. Do you look at some other house designs and think that's just lazy? I look at a lot of house designs <laughs> and think that they are <laughs> some other choice words than lazy. To go from an average home to a, a Cape-style eight-star home, costs about an extra $25,000 and you're saving about $6,000 uh, when you couple that with an EV per year. Today, I'm taking you on a tour of the Cape. This is Australia's most sustainable housing community. Every house has an average energy rating of at least 7.5 stars. And it's all just through clever design. Hi, bud. There he is. We have been invited up here with the family. So you might be asking, am I being paid to produce this content? The answer is no, I'm not being paid. I said I had full creative license over whatever videos I was to make here. But this is actually just what I'm really passionate about. This is what I love learning about. I love sharing. This stuff's important. I've got kids. And I want to help people understand the easiest way to make changes the way we live that can support their future. We also had a free couple of nights away. So... It was definitely a bonus in there for us. The Cape is a demonstration project to show how we can live uh, efficiently and comfortably in all electric homes, reduce our carbon footprint. And many households here aren't just breaking even on their energy bills, they're earning money from their power companies. Their solar panels on the roof are producing more power than they're using. They get to take money back. A lot of the homes have been in, in credit, which means the energy companies have paid them. So over 50% of the estate is open space. So instead of filling it all with hundreds and hundreds of houses, yeah. it's nice to have the open land. We've got a lot of young families in here now, so we're all hanging out down in the park. And my son, Willow, he talks about the boing boings, the kangaroos all the time. And like he gets to walk out his front door and he sees kangaroos every day. So I want to know, how do you build a house that's future-proof? We all know that the climate's changing. We know that the future our kids grow up in is going to be different to the ones we grew up in. So how do you create homes that are going to be best prepared for the future? The answer is pretty simple. And the experts, they're all here. So a lot of our designers who have designed many homes here, they can sort of hit eight stars with their eyes closed now. Someone's designing a house in anywhere in Australia. What are the most important things they need to think of? Yeah, north facing aspects, probably number one. Maximising the sunlight and the warmth that comes from that and using our natural resources, which are already there. I think that's probably key, number one. We're, we're probably one of the higher energy users in the estate. Definitely, yeah. A lot of people are running on zero bills pretty much all year round. Mm. Um, but they also don't have four children. We have four kids. Four million <laughs> loads of washing to do. During winter, we are running the dryer the dishwasher and the reverse cycle and we're looking about $400 a quarter. Mm -hmm. So that's our biggest bill. And then during the summertime, well, it's yeah, it's somewhere between nothing and $50. Orientation is probably the main thing that we need to be mindful of. So yeah. this house is stretched out east-west. So we have pretty much every room with a northern aspect. So then the biggest thing that comes into play is the glazing. So making sure we have the right amount of glazing on that northern orientation to make the most of the sun throughout the day. So obviously we've got the east and then it makes its way over and over to the west. So we are in a sort of a, a moderate to cool climate here. So we, we're designing to keep the house warm. Then when the house does warm up, we have a look at things like cross volley ventilation. So we have some windows on the south side. They're smaller than the windows on the north side, but we get a lot of southwesterly breezes that come through, especially in summer. 
So we can open up the house, which helps sort of flush out any of that excess heat. I think a lot of people think sustainable living, they have to they miss out on some comfort. Absolutely Whereas not. This is, this is beautiful. Yeah. So look, there's no drop dunnies here, is there? There is no <laughs> drop dunnies, no. Do you know what I haven't asked you is how much it cost you to build this? Is it an expensive way to build houses? Uh, no, because <laughs> anyone can do passive solar design. There's no reason why a Metricon or anyone like that can't still do an energy efficient home um, as long as they just do the, the basic passive solar design principles and embed those in, in their design, make it all electric, throw some solar panels on, mm. they're, they're halfway there. Build cost was around about 420 but the cost of building has substantially increased yeah, post-COVID. Yeah. <laughs> I think most banks do reduced interest rate like green home loans for energy efficient homes i yeah. actually did not know that yeah so if you design your house cleverly mm -hmm. you get lower interest rates correct why isn't everyone talking about this yeah so one of the other residents told us about it um and the rates were really great oh that there looks nice beautiful they're straight i'm impressed few little ones Every plant in this community has been carefully thought through too. Residents are only allowed to plant things from an approved list, all native and all carefully selected. Everything in the estate is all native and indigenous plants. And the reason being is that they require less water um, and less maintenance. They attract the birds and the wildlife. And they're beautiful, aren't they? They are beautiful. But I think the main thing is understanding that you know, once you plant these plants, they don't actually require that much maintenance. Yeah. And I think for someone that's not particularly great at gardening, it's a win-win. Yeah. You know, there's cultural norms of having second living spaces and, you know, all these extra rooms and stuff, but have a real think about what you actually need. You can still enjoy life's pleasures, Oh, exactly. You? Absolutely. It's, it's no different to standard living. You're just using electricity for everything and obviously solar on the roof and... Um, yeah, harvesting in the sun, it's pretty simple. Designing as small a footprint as possible. It doesn't mean you have to be, you know, tiny house living or anything, but just really be purposeful with how you design. In terms of the small footprint, it doesn't feel like a small home, but no. tell me what we've got going on here. Yeah, I think it's the, the high void and all the light coming in that kind of makes this living space feel a lot bigger than it actually is. And trying to really get the most out of the functionality of the home. So using every kind of square metre of the home and footprint and giving it a, a purpose. So... Uh, yeah, three bedroom, two bathrooms, unusual to be 112 square metres, but um, yeah, we've kind of fit everything in and it still feels spacious and light and bright. And uh, you've got a growing family. Yeah, we do. We've got another one on the way, so this will be number two. Um, so I think there's still plenty of room. What makes it energy efficient? Yeah, so it's seven and a half stars. Every perimeter wall, ceiling, floor is insulated. It's well sealed, so all the outside's fully taped, all of our windows, corked. Um, so it really stops any kind of drafting or anything like that. It, can I ask you what it costs to build? It's yeah, personal. so a few years ago, it was originally about 300 grand to build. At the moment, it's about 500 grand to, to build. That's not a lot though, is it? No, no. Compared to the average home, it's, it's still pretty good. Um, and it's a really highly energy efficient home. And um, we've got solar on the roof. We've got 10,000 litre water tank connecting to toilets, washing machines and garden and electric car charging. Um, so yeah, for, for what's packed into the home, it's, it's a pretty good price. What do your bills look like? Uh, they're pretty low, which is great. Yeah, we have electric cars, so we're still, you know, we've got high usage from an electricity point of view. Our air conditioning, we've probably turned on twice in the summer and then none in the winter. Like, that's that's it. We're just living without mechanical heating and cooling, effectively. That 50 bucks was the lowest one we had. All the homes here, you'll see that the roof lines are all on a particular angle. It protects it from the summer heat, but then allows for the winter sun to come in and warm up the thermal mass of the floor which is usually probably a concrete and then there's a brick wall or a, a thermal mass inside as well. When we were living in our old house um, I was getting these weird symptoms where I was dizzy and um, to the point it, it sort of mimicked a seizure. I, I'd be shaking and I couldn't work out what was going on um, and we went through the process of thinking that there was mold in the house we were able to discover it finally and then we just made the call we just said we're moving we're moving out it's just shifted the way that our family does things how's your health now yeah so much better the reason that we're here at the cape is because it's a beautiful example of healthy homes and with two small children um, health is sort of at the forefront of our decisions so we have all electric homes and that means there's no gas and so gas is a major cause of childhood asthma.
So toxins are released even when the gas stovetops, for example, are turned off. Do you think most people know that? I don't think many people do know yeah. it. But by removing gas, we are creating more healthy homes. So Because my kids have got asthma, or my son does. I've yes. just had an asthma attack. Yes. And no one's ever said to me, what type of stove top have you got? And there's networks of GPs, nurses, um, about 100 health professions that are actually working together to try and get this information out there. If we put health first, then we need to build our homes um, all electric. And this is the farm. This is the Capes Community Farm. Do you use the farm? We do, yeah, yeah. We're actually, um, we've got a little veggie garden in our backyard here and we bought our seedlings from down at the farm and planted those. Yeah, we buy veggies from down at the farm as well. Chop yeah, it down. Give it a bit of a twist as it goes. So go, grab it like a soccer ball or a basketball. You can basically just twist it right off. There you go, that's it. One of the incentives for creating the farm in the centre of this community is reducing food miles. So instead of having to truck in fresh produce from around the country, they make a lot of it on site. It makes it cheaper, also makes it a whole lot fresher. All I've got here is what's called these Heiko tubes. So yep. seedlings come out of here into these Heiko tubes and that's where we grow them on to become bigger plants. More than 6,000 kilos of food is grown here at the farm every year. A lot of it is sold back to the community. A lot of it is kept by residents who have their own food cubes. There are lots of beautiful broccolinis. You pick some of those? Uh, we can, we can is it yours or is it? No, this, is, this is all mine. So this, this, is, this is all the farmer, farmer stuff. There you go, beautiful, beautiful. It's 375 food cubes. That's um, a lot. <laughs> is yeah. it? This is the largest installation of food cubes in Australia. I wow. think ever, uh, in the world. So these food cubes here are about a metre and a half off the ground. 100 litres of water is stored right here on the base of every food cube. As, as the water evaporates and dries out of the soil, it, sucks, it creates a suction. And that um, means you end up using much less water? The water that you use is used really efficiently and it's where the plant needs it the most, in the soil where the roots are. Yay! This house here is significant. It looks just lovely and pretty like an ordinary house from the outside. But what's significant about this house? This is actually Victoria's first 10 star house. What does that mean? So the star rating is a measure of how much energy needs to go into a house to heat it and cool it year round to live comfortably. So 10's as high as you get. How much does this house cost to run? So this one has been calculated at, a, at about the cost of a cup of coffee per year. If people start to understand the design principles, this is the sort of thing you can really incorporate into any... Exactly. So the design principles that they've hit uh, nailed with the 10 star apply to seven and a half and the eight star houses across the Cape. So we're averaging over eight stars and all of the same principles apply. So you could be living in central Melbourne and be earning money on your energy bills. Yeah, um, the big thing that could prevent them from earning money in their bills is access to the winter sun. Oh, so right. we've got a, in our design guidelines a situation where people can't build on the north side of houses and therefore shade living spaces, especially in winter. They've uh, just got to be a bit clever with where and how you design your house. Yeah. Yeah, that's right. You don't have to come and live here at the Cape in order to learn how to live sustainably. You don't need to have solar on your roof in order to build sustainably. You can build a 10 star energy rating home with no solar. That's all about the design of the house itself. It's all about how the sun comes in, how it warms it up, how it keeps the heat in, the insulation. Anyone can do that with the way that they build. Now, 10 stars is hard to achieve, but with some clever design and planning, you know, eight and nine star homes, they're really achievable. So all of the homes of the Cape are connected with um, kilometres of walking and cycling tracks. It makes it easy to ride and walk everywhere, uh, leave the car at home. Yeah, so at the Cape, there's no front fences and that creates a really op open field. And a lot of the homes that back onto walkways and common property like this, they choose to make some mounds and, and those mounds merge in with the common property and the native veg to give themselves some privacy and increase the feeling of the size of their backyard. Now, what's happening here? So this is all the swales. So when it rains here at the Cape, all the water runs off into the swales and then they get all directed down into the wetlands. The wetlands are all planted with plants that will purify the water. 
which will then help the biodiversity and will help all of the animals and then also make it all nice and fresh for the ocean as well. Because this all takes a lot of thought, doesn't it? It does take a lot of thought. It's a lot of planning and it's, it's such a beautiful place and so well thought out. Whoa, look at that big one. That's huge. Whoa. Your kids are clearly very confident. How have they, how have they found this place? They love it. I reckon they've become a lot more independent since they've moved down here. And they've learned a lot more about recycling and about planting and gardening. And they love picking their own vegetables and eating them. And were they like that beforehand? That's a total shift. <laughs> you're, you said you're still learning about gardening too. We certainly are. You twist them around. That's it. That's it. Lovely. My cabbages rarely actually make it out like that because they just get eaten. Possums. Lots of possums at home. Hey, Claire, look at this one. You want to try a cabbage? Uh, we're at 230 lot estate. Uh, we're about a bit over half of those are built, um, with a lot more being built at the moment and the final stage still selling. You hear people talk a lot about solar energy. Someone who doesn't know a lot about this sort of stuff, or didn't until recently, I assume that meant solar panels. Solar energy just means the sun. So you can have a 10 star energy rating home with no solar panels. You just have to use the sun cleverly. It's all about positioning. It's all about the type of insulation. It's all about what times the sun hits, which part of the house. It's all about the type of floor that you've used in order to warm up the space naturally and where the wind comes through in the afternoon, cool things down in the summer. It's not rocket science, but most people aren't doing it because it's probably not obvious until someone tells you how. And yes, they cost a little bit more to build, $25,000 on average more across the build, but they then save on average $6,000 a year on energy bills. So you earn that back in five years. It feels like a bit of a no-brainer. Australia has the poorest standard of housing stock. And if you compare us to say some of the European countries, we're just so far behind. Until um, now. Well, we're slowly, slowly <laughs> catching up. We just need to get everyone else to do it. Are yeah. my kids missing me, Kim? <laughs> this gives me the optimism to be able to show my son and my you know future daughter or son that's coming um, be able to show them what's possible and give them ideas um, you know we don't have to solve everything ourselves in our generation but if we can kind of pass on some seedlings and some ideas and let that kind of grow as well um, so I, I feel optimistic there's like obvious challenges that are ahead of our next generation but they're smart they're bright and if we can plant the seeds I think They'll do well. Yeah. If you're new to this channel, my name's Christy Cooper, aka Green Thumb Reporter. I run veggie gardening tours in Melbourne, Australia at least every month and a whole lot of other stuff too. Subscribe, join the fun.